Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press, both books huge epic fantasies, and um, I'm doing a very special book review today, folks. I am doing a book review of The First 21 by Nikki Six. The most anticipated book of the year for me. You know I am a massive Motley Crue fan. And Nikki Six and that band has inspired me since I was a young boy in the 1980s. And we're going to talk about some of that stuff because this is a very inspirational book. And if you've been following my channel, you also know that every book I write is dedicated to you can see it right there the acknowledgement pages thanks also to stephen king motley crew and the oakland raiders i hope you can see that every book i write dedicated to those because those were the three things stephen king books motley crew albums and the oakland raiders were the things that i was just into the most as a young kid growing up in Sevier County, Utah. And I bring up Sevier County, Utah because that's very... Small towns in the West are very central to the theme of this book. Because me and Nikki Six, as I was reading this, me and Nikki Six had a lot of things in common when we grew up. First of all, we both lived in small Western towns. Him in Jerome, Idaho me in Sevier County, Utah. Very, very similar places, very remote places. I, I, I related to everything about his life when he started talking about Jerome, Idaho, and a lot of the other small towns he lived in, but we're going to get to that in a minute. First of all, we always review the covers of the books first, because you know I love graphic design and I love cover illustration. So here we've got the first 21 by Nikki Six. We've got these pictures this is wonderfully designed, professionally designed, great job all the way through. Plus, there's bonus material on the inside. On the inside, I love maps. You know I love maps. On the inside, we've got a map of Jerome, Idaho, of all places. And then on the back, we've got a map of Hollywood, California, you know, emphasizing the journey that he, that Nikki Six took. Um, as a young boy named Frank Farana in Jerome, Idaho, to becoming Nikki Six in Hollywood, California, and achieving all of his dreams in a grand high fashion. And this is what this book is about. This is the theme of this book. It is about following your dreams. One of the reasons that Motley Crue was so important to me as a kid, because in their music, and just in all the articles I read about these guys when I was a kid, they always just talked about Believing in yourself, doing things your way, and following your dreams. And I guarantee you that my books that are published by Simon & Schuster, arguably one of the biggest publishers in the world, none of my books would have ever, ever been written or published if I had not followed that advice and looked up to the example of these dudes. These guys were my artistic heroes. The Oakland Raiders were my athletic heroes. Stephen King was my literary hero. And I just worshipped these three entities unlike anything on the planet. And so whenever anything comes out regarding the Raiders, regarding Stephen King, regarding Motley Crue, I jump all over it. And so we're going to get into the nitty gritty of this book here. And hey, I brought all my Stephen, I brought all of my Motley Crue stuff out. My Motley Crue books, my The Dirt, Tommy Land biography, the Vince Neil biography, the Heroin Dire Diaries. We've got uh, this big picture book of Motley Crue. I've got every single one of their um, their essential, their crucial crew CDs here. Um, got it all. You know, now we just need uh, Mick Mars bio, and uh, I'm just saying there, I'd collaborate with Mick Mars on a bio. I wouldn't collaborate with anybody else. But I would collaborate with the Motley Crue people on a bio. If they ever, Mick, if you're out there and you're listening, you ever want to do a bio, let's let's get together and do it. Anyway, let's talk about this book here. Starts out 
Nikki talking about the big stadium tour they were going to do before COVID hit. You know, their last tour, the, their final tour, they uh, they signed an agreement that this was the last Motley Crue tour ever. But then they're like, hey, why don't we just uh, kick that agreement to the side and go ahead and do a, a very final tour with Def Leppard, Joan Jett, and Poison, and it'll be a stadium tour. They sold them all out. They sold every stadium out. But COVID hit. Tour never happened. Let's hope that they pick that up and do it again because it's going to be dope. Then in chapter two, he talks about his new life in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I live in Salt Lake City. I go to Jackson Hole all the time. I know what that's like up there. It's beautiful, relaxing, wonderful. In fact, back in my early art days when I was doing illustrations and gallery artwork, I sold paintings out of those galleries in Jackson Hole, like Trailside and Mountain Trails. So I know what it's like up in Jackson Hole. I can see why uh, people would want to live up there. It's very, very fucking expensive, but it is what it is. Then the book moves on to when Nikki Six was a kid, just moving from small town to small town. I mean, and he mentions a lot of these small towns and like some of these small towns south of Reno, Nevada, in the middle of Texas and stuff like that. And I'm just like, man, I Googled the names of these towns. I Googled these towns to just see what they're like. Hey, man, I feel, I feel you, Nikki. I feel you. I grew up in Sevier County, Utah, which is one of the remote, most remote places on the planet. And I feel you. Every time you started talking about Jerome, Idaho, and the Mormon community that you grew up in, and how all the th different things that you were into, and how you just looked and dreamt of bigger and better things. I was there. I lived that same life to the point of, you know, where you would go out and go hunting with your dog, Barnaby. I had my dog, Popeye, and we did the same things up in the mountains of Southern Utah. I mean, so many similarities. I mean, we played high school football. I still remember everything about that. I was number 32. I played de defensive back and wide receiver. You played D-line and, and uh, you know, you rushed the quarterback and you remember every play. And I, I get that, man. The small town. You lived, we lived like po uh, Jerome, Idaho, Sevier County, the Utah, in a lot of ways is, is remote and, and, and um, bleak as they can be. They're very kind of Norman Rockwell-esque in their charm and small town charm with the small drugstores and the small little shops and the place where you buy your first book or the place where you buy your first album or your first guitar or whatever it is. I mean, Nikki Six goes through all of this stuff, where whether it's living in Lake Tahoe, Jerome, Idaho, uh, you know, just all of these places. I loved reading about that. This is the, that's the strength of this book right here is him reminiscing on his childhood. And one of the things that's great about this is not only that, but we get some great photographs of, of of Nikki as a kid and a lot of his friends you know he mentions this friend Juan that he was so close to when he lived in a small town in Texas and look there's a picture of him and Juan right there and that's such a great treasure to have and to I mean it's great that he held either held on to that photo or found it somewhere and then we've got uh other pictures of him and his family when he was younger in Jerome, Idaho. And I love this picture particularly because this is right in Jerome, Idaho. As he's, You can see he's a teenage kid just dreaming of being a rock star. And I, I, I felt that too because, man, I even though I didn't want to be a rock star, I wanted to be a writer and an artist. And I just collected Stephen King novels. I collected all sorts of novels. I mean, you know, my library here, people have been watching my channel, you know, my library here is vast and huge. And these are all books that I've been collecting since I was a kid, reading all the time. And uh, a lot of the inspiration came from Motley Crue. I, you know, started to believe in myself. One of the things Motley Crue taught me was to be interested in what I wanted to be interested in and not apologize for it when, you know, the Mormon community that I grew up in would come down on heavy metal or when anybody in my family would say, you know, you're going down the wrong path. We want you to be this or that. I was like, no, I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to be an artist. That's what I'm going to do with my life. And because I knew that guys, these guys like Motley Crue that were an inspiration to me, that's what they spoke about in their songs, like stick to your guns, 
different songs like that and lyrics they wrote where it's just like, man, you fight for your rights and you do what you want to do and you do it unapologetically. And at the end of this book, Nikki Six gives a litany of rules that he lives by, which is all about that, you know. And as you go back and you look at his youth and you see kind of all the bad things that happened to him, there's times where he makes excuses like these things are holding me back. The way I've been raised is holding me back. But he eventually comes to the realization that, no, I got to accept the truth of what my life is. And only then can I go and move forward. And it came when he was at about the age of 21. That's why it's the first 21 where he's just like, you know, Frank Ferrana can't seem to accomplish a damn thing in life. And Frank Ferrana is full of excuses. And Frank Ferrana makes excuses. But Frank Ferrana has dreams. And so he went and he changed his name to Nikki Six. And with that name change, and he makes this very clear at the end of the book, with the name change came, you know, um, like power. He took his life in his own hands at that point. And he said, I control my own destiny. I don't have to be who I was raised by or not raised by. I don't have to be that man. I can be who I want to be. And from this day forward, I am making a change and I am going to be Nikki Six, and I am going to be the rock star I want to be. And things took off for him after that. You know, one of the other things that he talks about is, is actually the name Nikki Six. how he got that name. Very... It's not the greatest example of what you should do in life. He actually kind of, I won't give away the secrets, but it was kind of a sinister way he came about that name. And, uh, you know, just, I got to go back to when he was a kid. There are so many things about his life that rang true to my life, just living in a small town in the 70s and 80s. You know, he had an affinity for shag carpeting, like really colorful shag carpeting and wood paneling. And so do I still do. I still see, I still walk into places with that kind of decor and I'm just like, this takes me back. This takes me back. And then, and, and I, and, and, and the, and just the um hunting with his dog, this very Tom Sawyer-esque, life that he led, filling the furnace full of coal. If you've ever grown up back in the day when we grew up back then, you most people in Idaho, southern Idaho, southern Utah, you had coal furnaces and you had to fill those with coal. You had to take the clinkers out every night. And it was just kind of like a dirty job. He did that job. I did that job. I know what he's talking about. You know, and uh, reading about his childhood, it was almost as if I was reading about my own childhood. Now, he bounced around from small town to small town a lot. I grew up in Fairbanks, Alaska, till I was about 12 or so years old. Then we moved to southern Utah, Sevier County, Utah, till I was a teenager. So I really only moved twice. But I still understand, like, that longing for the friendships that I made in Fairbanks, Alaska. Like, Nikki Six would make these friendships in these different towns, like with his friend Juan or his friend uh, Weeks. I think the guy's last name was Weeks. And you just lose touch with these people. And that's kind of the way I felt moving from Fairbanks to Southern Utah. All my friends were in Fairbanks, and then I'm stuck in Southern Utah, which is a wasteland. Fucking wasteland. And there's no stores, there's no nothing. And all I had was books, Motley Crue albums. Oakland Raider games. I played high school football, like I said, and and Nikki Six tells stories about his the first time he asked girls out on dates and how awkward he was. I remember I was I put myself right back into my shoes as a kid then too, because I mean I ain't that much younger than Nikki Six. I mean maybe 10, 15 years or so, probably younger than the guy. But I still grew up in the eighties when Motley Crue was like a powerhouse, you know. And they, they were the big thing. And just when you get into the later parts of the book where he starts talking about his um, rock band London and how that they hung out with like Blackie Wallace and Quiet Riot and how he disliked the band Rush. And, you know, if anybody was a fan of the band Rush, he would never be their friend kind of a thing. And I just loved hearing all of those stories of how he, once he got to Hollywood, once he sort of did his own thing, got to Hollywood and really tried to make it on his own. Um, you know, 
And, and he met all of these people like David Lee Roth and Eddie Van Halen, and he met all these famous people, and then he became famous. And then um, one of the things that I wanted to say was, uh, you know, he uh, had an uncle. His uncle was the CEO of Capitol Records. So Nikki initially thought, I've got an in with Capitol Records. And one of the things I love about this story, maybe not back when Nikki was young, he probably hated this about the story. But I really found this fascinating was he, you know, his band London, he, he, he finally got his uncle, the CEO of Capitol Records, to come and watch the band. And now I'm not going to tell you how that ends because I want you to read it, but it's it's one of the most poignant parts of the story, and um, I think it's an eye-opener, and I think it was the uh, the eye-opener for Nikki, and it would have been for me, too. And uh, just this book, I loved everything about this book. I, as I was reading this and finding out all the similarities I had with uh, this guy who lived in a small town full of Mormons, just like I grew up in a small town full of Mormons, and uh, just all of this all of the things that happen in small Western towns and he nails it. He did it. He lived there and I feel it. And I was with you, Nikki, the whole way. I love this book. The first 21 by Nikki six book is fucking dope. Just like everything else that Motley Crue has done is fucking dope. I love it. Um, even my Funko pop Motley Crue guys, they're happy with it. Um, so I'm going to give the first 21, 10 stars out of 10 stars. It is that awesome.